Hey guys, it's Keyblade 147 and welcome back to Let's Play Tales of Vesperia. Um, I am enjoying myself by staring at this Rita all all day, and uh, it it never gets old. It's it, it's 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 so beautiful. Like, <laughs> okay, anyways. So now we're gonna actually proceed to what we were supposed to be doing. But I was like, oh no, I'm gonna tease you guys by just doing a bunch of side quests. Ah, okay. So pretty much, like, you can just skip all the side quests if you really don't want to do them. But, um, if you, um, just don't want, if you just want to go straight on ahead, just go here to Feral's Craig. And make sure you're over the, you know, the, the, the structured thing, whatever. <laughs> I look at this place and it looks like it could use some decorations. Some flowers here and there. Hmm, I wasn't able to see him when we came to the desert, but I think this is where we can meet him. But what if he suddenly attacks us? Oh, is Captain Douchebag peeing itself again? Yeah, like I said, he could use some, like, flowers or something. Hmm, why did it turn into a rocky desert? That's good. At least, you know, still determined to make this, you know, see this through the end. I'm sure it's more than that, to be honest. This is Rita Mordia we're talking about here. Hmm. I should also point out that I also did some grinding off screen and I also synthesized a few more stuff and also found some new monsters. Um, just, um, I'll have to point it out at some point later in the video. But, um, okay. This is really important, so I'm just gonna shut up and, um, let you enjoy, actually. So, I'll see you after this cutscene. Well, he doesn't seem to be here. Maybe he's off somewhere taking a nap. Pharaoh? You are here, aren't you? Insipid poison, you appear before me at last. So you are here. Is that how you greet all your guests, Pharaoh? By calling them names? For what reason have you come to me? Surely you are aware that I could end your existence with a mere thought. <laughs> you talk pretty big, don't you? Well, if you really want to fight, I'd hate to disappoint you. Yuri, no! Everyone, please wait! Estelle! Pharaoh, please hear what I have to say. Does death hold no fear for you, little one? For you gaze now into the mouth of death itself. I am afraid, but I'm even more afraid of dying without knowing who I really am. Bellius told me I needed to meet you to learn about my destiny. I have to know just what that destiny is. I understand that I am a threat to the Entelikea, but you said that I am a poison to this world. What is this power I have? Just who is the child of the full moon? If it is true that my existence cannot be tolerated, then it's okay if I have to die. But I at least deserve to know why it is I have to die. Please tell me, I beg of you. There was a time when this was a verdant land, sheltered by the blessing of an air crene. So there was an air crene here. But what happened? Why did it change? What you see are the results of too much air and its aftermath. As to why the air ran rampant, the answer lies with the poison brought by the child of the full moon. Huh? The power of the child of the full moon stimulates the air crene more than any Blastia. Huh? Blastia convert air into energy by way of a formula. So if Estelle can use her healing arts without the aid of any Blastia, 
She must possess a formula in her very being that lets her convert air into energy. Judith was searching for Blastia that used a particular kind of formula. So, this special formula Estelle has must also consume massive amounts of air, which causes the air crene to become more active and pump out more air than they should. I had hoped my hypothesis would have been wrong. Then I... It is as she has said. With each use of her power, the child of the full moon uses far more air than the Blastia. In so doing, the imbalance of air in this world is furthered. For the planet, such an existence can only be called a poison. So you just wipe it out then? Little quick to judge, aren't you, Pharaoh? This problem concerns the entire planet, and she is its cause. To do nothing would be unparalleled folly. If the problem's with Estelle, then it's for us to solve. You have no place in our affairs. The gravity of this situation is beyond your grasp. You don't honestly think that everything's gonna be all sunshine and rainbows if Estelle dies, do you? It would at least eliminate one problem. Pharaoh, at Heliord I stopped myself. And again at Dawngrest I stopped you. What I thought was a Blastia turned out to be a human. Before I realized it, I had lost my way. I never thought this child could be as great a danger as you had said. And due to your confusion, I granted you the time necessary to see things as they are. As a result, my sister Belius is now lost to me. Enough. This power will bring only ruin. Hmm, not sure I understand all this, but if her power's the problem, why can't she just not use it? There can be no guarantee she will not try to use the power. That's true. She does have trouble turning a blind eye to things happening around her. Someday she will surely use her power to help someone. However, as long as she keeps that spirit of compassion, she cannot only be seen as harmful. She is not like a Blastia. I know that you can feel the difference. Compassion alone will not save this world. Listen, Pharaoh. I get that you've thought all this through with everybody's best interest in mind, but why doesn't that world have a place for Estelle? It is sometimes necessary to remove a part to save the whole. I don't buy that for a second. What makes you so high and mighty that you're the one to decide who gets cut and who doesn't? We have endured the anxiety of existence for far greater a span than you can conceive. Such words mean nothing from those who call this world home for but a fleeting moment. Pharaoh, please, listen. The important thing is finding a way to stop the excessive air, correct? We still have time left to search for such a thing. Judith! And if... If the effects of Estelle's power reach their absolute limit, I will kill her as promised. You should have no complaint with this. Hey, Judith, are you serious? I'm sure brave Vesperia will come up with something before that happens, right? What? I... um... Yeah, yeah, of course we will! Well, score one for Judith. So that settles it. If we humans are to blame for Estelle's problem and bringing on the apocalypse, then it's up to us to make things right. If we give it all we've got and still blow it, and you can slow roast us on a grill for all I care. You have changed. If you were still as before. Have I? That is nice to hear. Very well. Be ever mindful though that time is fleeting. Wait! If the formulas are causing the excessive air, then there must have been times when this happened in the past. I mean, the Blastia were a product of an ancient civilization. There exist those who have inherited the seeds of the past. If any of them can speak of what occurred in the days of old, it is they. He's gone! Um, I... Thanks for everything, Yuri.
Judith, you too. No problem. But hey. What? It's okay if I have to die? What the hell was that? I'm sorry. I don't want to hear that again. I'm sorry. Man, I was really worried there for a while. We were pretty lucky that bruiser was in a mood for conversation. Poor Raven's heart can't handle that sort of stuff anymore. If he really wanted to kill Estelle, he'd have attacked us immediately. And that's what I can't figure out. I imagine Pharaoh was conflicted as well. He hid himself from us in the desert to see just what we were made of. Huh. Maybe he wasn't as bad as we thought after all. You might be right. I get the feeling he'd do whatever's necessary when push comes to shove. That sounds like you. Maybe. But what are we gonna do, Yuri? You heard what he said. We're going to fix the problems the air's causing, and that's all. That's easier said than done. We're pretty much at square one, you know. There's no doubt that the formulas are related somehow to the air getting used up. We need to find out about the ancient Blastia, and if they went berserk or not. If we had that kind of information, it might give us a clue. Ask those who have inherited the sins of the past about the days of old. Or at least that's what Pharaoh said. The Critia were the ones to invent the Blastia. In other words, we need to ask a Critian who is still familiar with the old stories. Yeah, the Critia are often credited as the inventors of the Blastia. There isn't much left of the Critian city of Timza, though. Things might be different if we had somewhere else to look. The hidden city of Miorzo. It is far older than Temza, and the birthplace of the Kritya. The first Blastia also originated there. Really? Well, what do you know? You wouldn't happen to know where this Miorzo might be, would you, darling? Hmm. I've heard that name somewhere. There was a Kritian in Ospio. I'm sure they mentioned something about it. Do you think that person might still be there? Well, there's no harm in checking it out. Judith, are you coming with us? I should. We still have the issue of the guild to straighten out. So, to Ospio then. Yep. Yep. So now we know, huh? Jesus, man, that's some tough stuff. Alright, let's get time. Makes it easier to win battles. You can get ready for what's next, attack enemies, change battle formation. And if we're having trouble running away from enemies, this makes it a cinch. Oh, and it even lets us keep enemies from running away. It's seriously awesome. Hourglass! <laughs> Personally, I find this way easier. <laughs> oh, that's why I love this girl, he's so awesome. Okay. Alright, so. I will meet you right back at Ospio after I do some warping. Alright, see you there. Oh, good thing I stopped actually, and just decided to train a little bit down here. Um, down here, actually, you'll see um, some squid that'll give you um, jet black ink. Um, and at night, you'll find like a stronger version of them here. But um, I'm gonna grind down here a little bit and get all the um, waitress ult uh, skit. So um, I'm just gonna land, and um, yeah, I'll just show them all right now. on the world too you almost be so smart how come i'm the only one who gets yelled at for messing up orders huh that must be because they like you so much yeah haven't you ever heard that the greatest hate springs from the greatest love what sort of crappy love is that forgetting carol for the moment why don't you ever wait tables yuri huh it's annoying i don't want to do it sounds like you just don't know the meaning of fun kid you turned down a chance to make nice with a bunch of cute female customers? Who wants to get friendly with an old pervert anyway? <laughs> yeah. Alright. Let's we'll see. I'll try in a little bit here and I'll see if I can get the rest of them. Alright. And then we'll head to... Oh, damn it. Oh, 
Estelle, you look so cute. Really? I'm glad. I was worried these clothes wouldn't look good on me. You seem kind of old-fashioned. That's what makes them cute. Uh, I wasn't talking about myself. No, it's okay. I was just saying that the clothes are cute, not me. You don't need to be so modest. You're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Some orders? Uh, it's just that wearing this puts me in the mood to be serving customers. You know, those clothes make you look a little more macho than usual, kid. Really? <laughs> you think so? So, I guess that means Carol will be cooking dinner tonight. Wait, you were supposed to cook tonight, Raven? Hold on! I, I mean, hey! You heard the man, Carol? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Carol, you go back to the kitchen. Alright, um. Yes. Wow, Rita, you look different than you usually do. You look cute. Are you saying I normally don't look cute? N no, that's not what I meant. Well, it's not like I care anyway. Hey, Yuri, you think she looks cute, right? Don't you? Huh? Yeah. I like those cat ears, I guess. Just the ears? Oh, come on, Yuri. Why are you being so shy? Your face is turning red. The ears are the problem. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> you can interpret that however you like. <gasps> She's so cute. Wow, that looks surprisingly good on you, old man. I'm surprised you're surprised. Of course it looks great. Yeah, that sort of messy look suits you pretty well. Well, I didn't expect a naive young lady like yourself to understand an adult's subtle grace. Why would I want to understand that? So that's an adult's subtle grace, huh? Hmm? I feel like it's boosting your natural sketchiness more and more. Oh, that I understand. No, no, no. <laughs> yep. Okay. And we got one more to go. Okay, I also want to point out just before I start this kit, if you have Yuri cook um, rice ball a certain amount of times, he'll make beef bowl with that. So, another thing to know. Somewhere, I'd go there every single day. Ah, Carol, taken by the charms of an older woman. Of course, I do the same thing. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I wonder if I should show a little more. You know. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, God, yes. Judith, I think that's enough. I can't stand seeing Raven like this for much longer. <laughs> Personally, I think I think <laughs> he's better that way, actually. He's a lot more. Hilarious that way. All right, so now we'll finally head to Ospia like I said we would okay Okay, and we're finally here, but first I want to do this I want to grab some synthesis items over here And I didn't get very much but hey, what are you gonna do? And now I'm just going to torture the viewers by just running to Ospio. I could have just gone on bowl, but nope We're gonna do this the hard way Alright. 